Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Today's video is the video in which I finally talk to you about all of the Korean beauty products that I've been testing out. So of course I have a plan for today's video. I'm going to take you through my experience with all of the K-beauty products that I've tried so far. So there definitely are two brands that I have started to try, but I do not have yet in this video. We're going to be doing dedicated reviews on this channel, and I think some of you will be really excited about the brands that I've chosen for the future. We're going to be doing Rovectin, which a lot of you have asked for, and then also Pyun King. Yule, which I'm just always going to butcher the pronunciation of. I've noticed not as many people are excited about that one. I think just because they've been around for a while. It's that whole novelty thing, but they're new to me and I'm very impressed so far. So again, not in this particular video, in future videos. And then as for everything else, I've roughly made an outline based on brands because for the most part, I've tried more than one product from all except for one of the brands, and then we'll have an other section. Stay to the other section. There's some interesting notes in there. And one other quick update to the comment section from Monday's video. So I was surprised how many of you said you were interested in a comparison of what it's been like to shop at these K-Beauty retailers. Um, I don't know if I'm quite ready for that video, but I do think it would be a very interesting one. So far, I've only purchased from Yes Style. I used to buy from Yes Style a lot uh, back in the day. And Joel C, Style Vana, and Style Korean. I don't know, it's, it, it doesn't feel like a lot. Maybe it does now that I've said it. But regardless, this is basically K-Beauty haul one of I don't know, because now that I've discovered uh, the right K-Beauty products, I'm, I'm very interested in Korean skincare and Korean makeup as a whole, even Korean hair care. We're going to have some of that coming up. It's so funny for me to think back to, you know, I feel like I wasn't that interested in K-beauty for a while, but it really is because I didn't try the right Korean skincare products for my difficult skin's needs. That's that's what it ended up being. Brands like Tony Moly, Innisfree, those are great brands, but they just didn't they didn't work out for me that well. So I feel like I kind of tossed aside K-Beauty for a long time and now I'm regretting it. So we got a lot of catching up to do. I want to go ahead and start this haul with the brand Vanilla & Co, which I know a lot of people love the cleansing balm. They actually did gift me the bathroom BFF set. This is such a nice set. It's $25 and you get a full size of the cleansing balm, a travel size of the foaming cleanser, and then also a cute little pink towel. Towel, washcloth, I guess it's a washcloth technically. I am a huge believer in pairing your cleansing balm with a washcloth. I say it a lot on this channel, absolutely stand by it. And then I also did buy the Deer Hydration Water Water Boosting Cream from Ulta. Uh, so let me give you some reviews of these. The cleansing balm, absolute favorite for so many people and I completely see why. It's a wonderful cleansing balm, removes all traces of your makeup, no added fragrance. It's just very straightforward. I will say this is new packaging. When I purchased this a couple of years ago, I did love it back then. I don't know if they reformulated the actual formula itself. It seems to be about the same. But the new packaging is really pretty and you do get a scoop with this. You get a little tiny uh, uh, insert lid in the packaging and then it comes with a scoop that you can store right in it, which I really appreciate that detail. As I said in my declutter video, if you give me a scoop, I will use it. If you don't, I will absolutely forget. And it does get a little gross to put your fingers into, I feel like especially cleansing balms. I don't know why, it's somehow a little bit more gross than a moisturizer. That doesn't make a lot of sense though, because you're actually washing it off. I don't know, I don't know why I feel that way, but here we are. The foam cleanser, I'm just gonna give you a spoiler for this video. I feel like all of the cleansers in this particular video are a little more stripping than I expected. It's nice, no added fragrance, it does cleanse very well. It just left me a little dry. 
And uh, again, it's surprising to me. It's not something I expected. We'll see if the Rovectin one that I purchased is not this case. I feel like it might not be from the reviews. We'll see though. I haven't tried that one yet. But yeah, just a little bit drying. It may work out just fine for oily skin. And it may be another one of those uh, situations where, you know, the environment really does play a giant role in your skincare preferences and needs. And, you know, it's, it's a different climate in Korea. It truly is. Which is a fantastic segue into the Dear Dear Moisture Cream. I uh, thought this was going to be perfect for dry skin, as that's what the reviewers said. But to me, it's still a little light. Certainly a step up in hydration from some of the moisturizers I've tried. So again, Innisfree is a great example here. Wonderful products if you have oily skin. For me, that moisturizer, I plowed through it. That's how you know a moisturizer is not for dry skin. If you have dry skin, if you can finish a moisturizer, a whole thing in two weeks, it's not for your skin type. <laughs> I would actually say this one is a medium weight moisturizer and again a lot of K-Beauty products are much lighter so I do like it. It does have some added fragrance and I also noticed it's no longer on the Alta website so I'm starting to wonder if they're going to reformulate it and reflect the trends, take the fragrance out of it. I think that may happen which is all to say I do have a suspicion that I'll like this one more come the summer months. Um, what I like about the ingredients, it does contain hydroxyethyl urea. That's a great humectant ingredient, especially for dry skin. We have some Nalumbo nucifera flower water, which I love from my Primera essence. And then also, oh, no added uh, hyaluronic acid. I actually wanted to note that because I know some people cannot use any ingredient in existence. There's somebody that can't use it. So yeah, no hyaluronic in here. Uh, some niacinamide though, which I personally love as an ingredient, but I've been surprised how many people say they're not able to use that one. Moving on to the brand Benton. This is a brand where I want to find the right products for me. So you may have seen in a past haul, I received the toner, the snail essence, snail bee toner. Oh, it's the Snail Bee High Content Skin Toner. I just realized this is a different line from Benton. The one that I bought is the Snail Bee Ultimate Serum. I guess the ultimate line is different. But anyway, what had happened is I didn't love that toner solely because of the product itself. I loved the idea of it. I love Snail and Bee. Those are some of my favorite ingredients. But the toner itself, to just be completely honest, sprayed in a terrible way. It was a pump system that would miss my hand and very often, let me tell you. But again, liked the idea, that's why I keep coming back to this brand, why you'll see the essence in a future haul. And you may be able to see, I've actually gone through a good chunk of this. This serum was a little bit more pricey, but oh my goodness, the ingredients list on this is just absolutely gorgeous. No added fragrance. We have Saccharomyces Snail Ferment Essence as the first ingredient, which is quite an interesting take there. So fermented snail extract, tea tree leaf water, again, not to be confused with the oil, but may have benefits for people that deal with acne, like myself, green tea, niacinamide, willow bark extract, one of those uh, gentler BHAs, B venom, beta glucan. It's, it's beautiful, beautiful ingredients list, but also it's kind of expensive. 27 for 1.18 fluid ounces, and ultimately, I still don't feel that it replaces my holy grail of the Kosarex Snail Essence. I feel like that's the roadblock that I'm running into. I want to keep trying other products in the same idea, but ultimately, I just love that 96% Snail Essence. So yeah, I guess I haven't found something that quite replaces that for me yet, although I do like this. I do like this product. As for Dear Claire's, I feel like I hear so many good things about this brand. I know they're a very, very popular brand. So I did go ahead and buy the freshly juiced vitamin drop. Uh, I like vitamin C, I like L ascorbic, but I'm concerned about this one. Why is it so yellow? It's not expired. This is a new product that I purchased in probably November. You can see I've used a good amount of it. I've been keeping it in my refrigerator why is it yellow? And I think they say that this one is formulated to not oxidize, but that's pretty much 
mm, in disagreement with the conventional knowledge on L ascorbic as an ingredient. A pale yellow doesn't necessarily mean it's oxidized, but it's also only in here at 5%. So it's pretty yellow for 5%, if you see what I'm saying, because I, again, I do believe this is supposed to be clear. The feel on your skin is very oily with this, which is so shocking to me because what have I kept saying about K Beauty? It's very light on. This one is really, it, it, it feels oily. And the ingredients list does look nice. We do have a lot of antioxidant rich ingredients. We do have some peptides, which I always like to see in my products, but also a lot of essential oils, which I think that surprised me. In a product that doesn't have any added fragrance, it still contains lavender oil, orange oil, and that's just not gonna work for everybody. So I have to sit here and tell you, I feel like this is overhyped. Granted, this is just my opinion. I know a lot of people love this, but again, 5% is not what's been studied in the literature. You have to aim for at least 15%, very oily, full of essential oils. It's just also yellow, also yellow. It's just not something I uh, really loved. Let's talk about the brand Huxley next. So I think I wanted to love this brand because I love Brave New World. I am just telling you this to put it all on the table. I think that's why I saw this brand and said, I have to, I have to buy some things from this brand. I, I, I have to. I couldn't find a lot of info on this brand and what I could find was from several years ago. So I get the feeling that maybe this brand was pretty hyped a couple of years ago, but not so much anymore. I'm not surprised because Whoa, this is strong. This is very scented. I have to tell you some things about this one, and it, it may also be an unpopular opinion. Oh my, I just said I don't like the Claire's Serum, and am I about to tell you I like a very scented essence? But hear me out, this is a very interesting product. So they say it's an essence grab water, and I admit to you that when I bought this, I was like, what does this actually mean? It almost feels like a serum when you apply it, but much lighter. What it actually exactly feels like, at least to me, is have you done the seven step method with essence? You know how you just keep piling on essence until you feel very hydrated? You get the exact same feel from seven layers of a watery essence as you get with one layer of this. It's absolutely fascinating. But again, I said on popular opinion, and let me tell you why. Alcohol is the third ingredient. In here, it also, for whatever reason, contains peppermint extract, although you, you don't smell it. It actually smells kind of, how does this smell? It smells like Bobby Brown's Beach. It's so bizarre. I've never smelled a skincare product that smells this much like a specific perfume. Oh yeah, and I don't need to tell you at this point, but also it does contain added fragrance. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be popular in this current state of skincare, but it is, it, it is interesting. I like to see my life as a live and learn situation. So that was my first order. The second time I bought a Huxley product, I lived and learned and I bought a body lotion. How does this brand do scent so well? It smells so, smells so good. This smells exactly like you just walked in to a flower garden. There's flowers blooming all around you. It smells, it smells absolutely amazing. This is the scent Moroccan Gardener, by the way. So appropriately named. Now, also, this one is for people who don't like the feel of body lotion because again with this amazing texture thing that this brand seems to do, uh, you apply this on your skin and it just absorbs immediately. It just disappears. That's not really enough for my dry skin or maybe at least not in the winter months. So even though I do like the smell of it, I've been layering a second body lotion over it truly because it's just not enough. But again, this may be something that appeals to some people. I'm telling you, if you can't handle the feel of lotion, this one might be for you. Like you can probably see, it's completely, it's completely gone for my hand. And yet I will say, I do feel that my skin feels more moisturized after using it. So honestly, I don't know what to tell you about this brand so far. I've only tried two products. I want to order more. 
But I also do know that this is probably still going against popular opinion to say, hey, here's a brand that actually has some pretty unique products, but also alcohol fragrance, etc. I don't know. I don't know if I'll buy more at this point. No, I totally will. I'm, I'm totally going to buy more because I'm, I'm intrigued. Brands always get my interest by being different. So then, the company MBX was kind enough to send me some of their products. I think we talked about this company in What's New in Skincare, where I talked about Otzi, Otzi, rather. Uh, they own quite a few brands that are at Alta, at Sephora. They have I Do Care as well as Kaja. So we'll start with I Do Care. This is the little My Kitten, Kitten My Balance on Balancing and Calming Trio. This seemed like such a perfect set for my skin type as it does seem like it's oriented towards acne prone skin. So you get the, let me open it and show you, the Clarifying Cannabis Sativa Hemp Seed Oil Cleanser. Oh my gosh, I thought I was going to absolutely love that. But first of all, that's a product where you use a lot less than you might expect. It's definitely one of those a little goes a long way products. I used way too much the first time I ever used it. And you know, even though it is an oil cleanser, it's kind of a, a little bit more of a drying cleanser. Definitely not a first cleanse, it's a second cleanse. I thought it might be a first cleanse from its name, but no, definitely a second cleanse. I do appreciate the hemp oil. I'm again on the fence about the peppermint oil in here. However, I will say it's a cleanser and a lot more people are able to use those types of ingredients in a wash off formula. So it may work out for people, but it won't be one that I repurchase. But this one, the Juicy Kitten Purifying Power Green Serum, I actually really like this. However, again, because my skin is quite difficult, I do have to use this as a second serum. So if you saw my acne layering video, I absolutely have to start with a salicylic serum, and that's something that I pretty much have to turn to Western brands for. I do believe that Korean brands can use it, just not at over 0.5%, and I need it at 2%. However, this pairs with salicylic so well. So you get niacinamide, you get willow bark extract, which again, don't see that as salicylic or BHA as much as seeing it as salicin. It's really a great anti-inflammatory ingredient, but not quite as active against acne. It is absolutely loaded with antioxidant rich ingredients, algae, kale, turmeric, hemp seed oil. I also did not think that this was a scented product when I used it. However, it turns out it actually does contain some fragrance. So do know that it's in here. I do suspect it's at a very low concentration. Overall, definitely my favorite from the set. As for the Yoga Kitten Balancing Heart Leaf Clay Mask, this one reminds me so much of the Rosen Skincare Earth Mask, which I do enjoy. But nonetheless, I don't think that's for everyone, and I don't think this will be for everyone either. It's a very strong eucalyptus smell. And yet, hilariously enough, with this one, no added fragrance, you just are smelling that eucalyptus. Also has tea tree extract, again, not the oil, the extract. Uh, has some bentonite clay in here, so it is a bit more of a, a purifying type of mask. Overall, I do like this one. You're just not going to get quite as much longevity from this. It's 0.35 ounces, which is, is not a lot of product, but you'll get to test it out and see if it works for you. Overall, I think it's a cute intro to the brand. Definitely think it is for acne-prone skin. I would just say, again, if your acne is uh, more of a next-level type of situation, I would not rely on... I wouldn't rely on K-Beauty alone. And again, this is not because I'm bashing K-Beauty. It's just because of the limits of the Korean government on the actives that may help with acne. Noonie, this is such an interesting little brand, and these are very affordable products. So we have the Deep Cleanse Snowflake Whipping Cleanser. This thing is giant, and it is going to last you such a long time. This is the Marshmallow Whip Maker, and it's made to go with this. It's very interesting. I'll make sure to put up a video showing you how this works. But basically, you pour the uh, a, a little tiny bit of the cleanser into this, you add some water, you pump it, and you get this tremendous amount of foam. I'm not going to lie to you about how enjoyable that is to use. You already know I love the Beauty of Joseon bubble toner, so of course I loved using a bubble cleanser. But again, I do think this is a little bit more drying. It did leave my, my skin feeling like, oh, I need some moisture, I need some toner immediately. 
Again, this could be as simple of a situation as this isn't made for my skin type. I mean, it does contain clay in it, which does kind of suggest it's more for oily skin. But nonetheless, it's just very hard for me to guess at how that will be for oily skin types to use it. And for me, it was quite, quite drying. But this little Kaja makeup brand, oh my goodness, they are so adorable. I see why this has been so hyped for quite a while. So I am wearing this makeup today. This is the Mocha Spritz Beauty Binto. It's so tiny, but it's actually really cute. Bouncy Matte and Shimmer Eyeshadow Trio. I really appreciate that this one in particular has two mattes, as I tend to like mattes a little more than shimmers. But it's, it's made to be a very simple, easy to use, quick on the go type of eyeshadow. You just dip your fingers in, spread it on your eyes, add whatever additional colors you want to add, and you're good to go. Real quick, real easy to use. A softer shimmer, a lot like what I was talking about in my haul on Wednesday. I think that, I do think that shimmers might be going in this direction. I mean, we had these incredibly intense shimmers for so many years that I guess it's just, I guess it's just trends. Speaking of trends, and not to go on too much of a tangent here, but, you know, I really do think that Makeup and skincare trends are a little blown out of proportion. I think you should always do whatever works for you. So, you know, this is a, a much faster makeup look than you sometimes see on this channel. It's still more than you sometimes see on this channel when I come on here completely barefaced. And I just really think whatever makeup style you enjoy, whatever works for your needs, wear that. I know that this glossy aesthetic is, is, is quite trending right now. To the level where I've seen people kind of shaming full coverage, I'm not a fan of that. I'm really not a fan of that because I, I think at the end of the day, if you enjoy full coverage, if you have a lot of acne and you want to put full coverage on top of that, then I know that firsthand. I'm barely wearing base products today, but do you think when my skin looked like that, I wanted to do this type of look? Absolutely not. Let's not kid ourselves here. The first step in this glossy aesthetic is be naturally beautiful and have perfect skin. Once again, unpopular opinion, but I'm not wrong. Let's go ahead and move on. I also have the Kaja Roller Glow. This is what I used for highlight today. Oh, this is cute. It's definitely light though. It's not your blingy highlighters, but we already discussed that. You get a cute little sponge roller, you roll it in here. You do have to warm it up a bit. It says on the box to roll it quite a bit initially. I found that to be quite true, but then you can roll it on your cheek and you get a nice amount of shimmer. One suggestion as a live and learn, do this before blush. It's so counterintuitive to the way you apply powders, but yeah, it turns out I'm actually really preferring cream and liquid highlighter applied first. But it is really cute. This shade right here is 01 Cosmic Laundry. And my final category for this video is everything else. So I figure we'll start with the makeup since we just did a little bit of makeup. This is the 16 brand creamy matte lipstick to express tasty mood with its sweet fragrance. Uh, so what I just said about the Kaja brand doesn't actually apply here. This is a, a, a very pigmented lipstick? I was not expecting this. I thought that it was going to be a more lip stain type of lipstick, but no, it is fully, it is fully pigmented. And the shape of it is so interesting. I thought I was going to hate this when I first opened it, but no, it's actually, it's actually quite a nice lipstick. I have heard nothing about this brand. In fact, I'm very new to Korean makeup, so feel free to drop any recommendations you have in the comment section below so I can buy and have more experiences with more Korean retailers and then make that video. It does smell edible though, so I'll give them that tasty note. By the way, this shade is Cherry Almond. Getting down to my last skincare products here, so this is such a find, oh my goodness. This is the uh, VT Cosmetics Sika Daily Soothing Mask. Hold on, you, you, are, you, you may not be ready for this. Look at this, everyone. It is a box of sheet masks that comes with tweezers, so you can take one out without added waste. <gasps> this is after my own heart. I talked about this brand such a long time ago. They sent me some sheet masks in PR, and I did enjoy them. I thought they were great Sika-based sheet masks. My comment with them that still stands is that they're a little bigger. 
I'm sure that is wonderful news if the standard Korean sheet masks don't fit your face, but I guess I have a smaller face. What can I say? So I don't really, I don't really use them all that often. Specifically, I will use them the night before I wash my hair, but that's, that's kind of it because it gets into my hair. So I was kind of hesitant about making this order, but I loved the idea so much. You get 30 sheet masks in this box with less waste. Again, you get, you get, you get why I'm so excited about this. And it turns out these are a little bit smaller. So they fit my face perfectly. I absolutely love this. I'm keeping the entire box in my refrigerator so I can get a nice cold sheet mask. It may be cold outside, but I still love my cold sheet masks. I love my cold sheet masks. I am so pleased with this find. I hope that more brands go in this direction in the future because I'm not the only one that feels like the way we do sheet masks is a little wasteful. Let's figure out how to make it less wasteful. Quick little ingredients discussion because I actually do really like the ingredients here. So we're getting hyaluronic acid, honey extract, royal jelly extract, antioxidant rich ingredients, rich in amino acids, but it does contain some grapefruit extract, which not everybody can use. And then it also does contain some fragrance, although again, a very light amount of fragrance. And that's all I have for this particular video. I am hoping to make this a, a monthly thing, at least for the time being. Once I stop doing this whole revisiting brands thing and get into my real trials again, I think we'll probably do things a little bit differently, but I'm still really enjoying dipping my toes into all of these K-beauty brands. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.